Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Wednesday the 24th of February as we continue our journey through Lent together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of Penitence Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation. And sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked. And sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God. The God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 6. Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, neither chasten me in your fierce anger. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. Lord, heal me, for my bones are racked. My soul also shakes with terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Save me from your loving mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you, and who can give you thanks in the grave? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow and flood my bed with my tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, or you that do evil. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame and confusion. They shall suddenly turn back in their shame. Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Lord Jesus Christ, may the tears shed in your earthly life be balm for all who weep. And may the prayers of your pilgrimage give strength to all who suffer. For your mercy's sake. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning, we continue to hear from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, reading verses 20 to the end. Declare this in the house of, Ju of Jacob, proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Do not tremble before me. I place the sand as a boundary for the sea, a perpetual barrier that it cannot pass. Though the waves toss, they cannot prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. For this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They did not say in their hearts, Let us fear the Lord our God, who gives the rain in its season, the autumn rain and the spring rain, 
and keeps for us the weeks appointed for the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have deprived you of good. For scoundrels are found among my people. They take over the goods of others. Like fowlers they set a trap. They catch human beings like a cage full of birds. Their houses are full of treachery. Therefore they have become great and rich. They have known fat and sleek. They know no limits in deeds of wickedness. They do not judge with justice. In the cause of the orphan to make it prosper. And they do not defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? And shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule as the prophets direct. My people love to have it so, but what will you do when the end comes? Here ends our first reading. Song of Manasseh Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence, before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God Most High. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Our second reading, we continue to hear from St John's Gospel, chapter 5, today reading verses 30 to the end. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I, but I say these things so that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's, the works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing. Testify on my behalf, that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings. But I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another, and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote about me, but if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. And we commit this day to you, for all that we will do, the work we will undertake and the rest we will enjoy. We thank you for this opportunity we have to hear the words of scripture and to meet together in prayer, knowing that we are always in your presence as we travel this Lenten journey. We pray for our world, the world that you have so beautifully created. We pray for your gift of peace and reconciliation in areas of the world where there is warfare, conflict and hatred found today. We pray for the leaders of nations with the tasks that are entrusted to them on behalf of their people. We pray for the decisions that they have to make at this time facing this global pandemic. We pray for those parts of our world that like ourselves are under strict restrictions. Lord, we pray for wisdom for them as they govern us and guide us. From our diocesan prayer intention today, we pray for the Archbishops of Canterbury and York and for the central governance structures of the Church that they would have wisdom in their decision making and strive in all they do to enable and empower all people of faith. Lord, we pray also for our own bishops in this diocese, for Bishop Julian, Bishop Philip and Bishop Jill. We pray for our Archdeacons Mark and David and for the leadership roles that they have in guiding us during this time. For the information they give, the support they provide and the prayers that they make on our behalf. Lord, we pray for them this day in all that they will do and that they would be people who inspire us in our faith as well. From our parish prayer intention, we pray today especially for those who work in urban ministry in the towns and cities across our country. We pray locally for the work of Empower, of helping urban evangelists to train them to work in their local communities and contexts. We pray for the challenges that are faced by those in urban ministry. And we ask for your blessing to be upon their priests and people this day. We continue, Lord, to pray for our schools. We pray for our young people who are attending places of education and those who are being schooled at home with the challenges and the opportunities that that brings for them, their parents and carers, and also for the work that the teachers are doing in providing lessons across different platforms. We pray for those whose responsibility it is to keep everyone safe and for all the planning that will go into opening our schools again from the 8th of March onwards. We pray for our key workers, 
for those who go out to work and those working from home. Lord, we thank you for all that they do in helping our day-to-day -day lives run smoothly and providing for all our needs. We continue to pray for those who feel anxious and concerned about their jobs, who feel that they are under threat or for those who've sadly lost their employment. We pray for those who are furloughed and whose businesses are still closed. Lord, we ask for your blessing to be upon them today, that you would give them peace of mind and show them a way forward to the future. We pray for those places that try to help those who find themselves very vulnerable in society, for those who ring up friends and, and neighbours, for those who look after those who are isolated and lonely, for our food banks and food larders, for those people who work with those in debt, and for all who help those who struggle. We continue to pray for our health service and for all people who work within it across the various different roles and responsibilities that are needed to try to care for people who are unwell this day. We pray for those who work in intensive care units, those who work on the wards, those who work in the training of others, those who work behind the scenes and for our chaplains who provide pastoral care and support for all. And so we pray for our local hospitals, those who work in them and those who find themselves in hospital at this time. We pray for our hospices, for our care homes and sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, as they prepare in the next few weeks for the possibility of visitors being admitted. And for the joy that that will bring to both family and to residents. We pray for those who work out in the community, for those who provide help for people in their own homes. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres and for the advice that they will give today. And also for all those places that are vaccination hubs. Lord, we continue to give thanks for the rollout of this programme in our own country and across the world. We pray for those who will be administering vaccines today and those who will receive them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are unwell at this time, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and those whose needs are known to you alone. We pray for Lisa, David, Margaret, Jeff, Alan, Chris, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Marion, Douglas, Steve, Brian, Joanna, Ian, Jean, Jane, Eric and Jennifer. Lord, we pray for them and all those we name in the silence of our hearts today, that you would bring them your healing and wholeness. And so we pray for those who have died especially for those who've died this past night and those who've watched and waited with them. We pray for those who've died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we pray for all those who mourn, who feel weighed down with that pain of bereavement, that you would surround them with your compassionate and loving arms this day. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are yet without sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit. So as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of morning prayer today. I do hope that you have a good day ahead of you, whatever you may be doing. If you're going out, I think it's definitely umbrella weather today. Do hope that you stay safe, take care and look after yourselves. Have a service of the evening prayer at five o'clock this evening if you're able to join me for that. And in the meantime, you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.